Hey, this is Glendon with the second requested video of Hustler Consulting. Everyone can thank Pedro. <clears throat> Excuse me, a lot of been working out, a lot of stuff's coming up. Everyone can thank uh, Pedro. He requested this. How do you research on a business ideal dealing with a service or product? Sometimes I get overwhelmed and get a nasty headache. I'm probably expecting myself to climb Mount Everest without climbing experience but it's a start uh, I'm gonna stay here for a second now just to clearly let you know what goes on a hustler consulting requested video is one that as you can see Pedro paid for it and if enough of you hit the little eye the little gray eye that's gonna be to the left of the screen and donate if the donations exceed will equal to 50 or exceed to 50 Pedro gets his money back it's just something new I'm trying, just letting you know how it works. So let's jump into this. And once again, you can thank Pedro. Now, getting on the research aspect, that is, there are businesses predicated on research for businesses, just to let you know what an onerous process it can be. I'm going to give you a few tips to streamline and then break it down. Uh, sometimes they get overwhelmed and get a nasty headache. Um, that comes from you are probably spending hours and hours researching and you just don't feel like you're getting anywhere and you're getting frustrated. And I'm probably expecting myself to climb Mount Everest without climbing experience with a start. This is a very appropriate um, thing to say. This is a way appropriate way to feel because starting a business and you never have, it, it's a lot to learn very quickly. And that's why it's so easy to get overwhelmed and that's why many people burn out. So we're going to break it up, you know, breaking up the elephant because this is a process that I use. And, you know, I've, I'm going to give you the long version first before I give you the short version. Keep a notebook or journal. Google Drive is good. Uh, you want to develop a habit of consistency. Everyone thinks that creating a business is about bro being brilliant, having information that other people don't have. If you just stay consistent for a long time you will make money. The consistency part, I can't even overemphasize how important that is. Just being consistent with your research and your application of the research. Create a to-do list and knock out one item per day. All right, so I'm going to give you a scenario. Say you're researching how to import cowboy boots from China. First thing you're going to do is go to a website with manufacturers. You're going to get all the information about who makes these boots, how much does it cost, and that thing. And that's the first section. Then you got to go to another place that's like, okay, how much import fees, duty fees, what do I, what am I looking at in regards to that stuff? So you've got to find the product, find out who makes it, potentially fly over there and meet with people. Uh, I hear you don't have to do that anymore, but I would think if you're going to invest significant sums of money on creating a product you will want to meet the people who are making it or you could create your own factory here so break down what is the most important thing and what i'm going to think about for the boot business is what is your end goal because many people get into business creation without lifestyle designation if you go out and get in this import export business and you're factoring money and you have a lot of cash locked up, how does that impact your other life? You got to say, does this importing these cowboy boots work with my life plan? If it doesn't, you're not importing cowboy boots, but say importing cowboy boots does work with your life plan and you're going to go forward. You go ahead. Who makes them? What kind of federal issues or, you know, licensing things I'm going to deal with. And then, you know, before you spend a dime, before you spend a dime because everyone's like well look at the market first and figure everything else out i disagree because the market can be robust but if your entry into the marketplace is not a good execution you can lose your ass there are plenty of people who create let's let's i'll give you a few categories of markets that are robust grocery stores robust uh restaurants robust i mean there's plenty of customers for those two businesses. How often do we see smaller competitors who do not have the efficiency of scale get into the game and get knocked out? They had a good plan. They researched the market. So 
it's very important that you get your process worked out very strongly before you even go into the market because the market could be great but if the market is robust that is usually a sign of thin margins not necessarily a truth but it's usually a sign that if there's a lot of competitors in the market and you should look like okay the cowboy boots are people dropping the price on the cowboy boots on amazon and ebay it's the race to the bottom and then it's like okay they're dropping the price on regular cowboy boots i'm going to get blue cowboy boots and then you actually find some you know spend some money get some test products and another thing if you are serious and this is advice that's going to go a little counter to other advice now I give people but since you know the Pedro is asking for this and I see I feel he's very very serious you could create a development holding company what that is is an LLC or an incorporation you can call it Pedro Inc uh, Pedro's wild dreams Pedro's big ambitions whatever and do all of this stuff under that corporation so any money that you spend any of these things happen you've got a record and also keeps you very accountable so you've got all this stuff together and I mean you could get this corporation set up for less than 100 bucks if you're in Georgia well about 100 bucks if you're in Georgia could be maybe 250 elsewhere 100 to 250 depending on most jurisdictions so get that business checking account and then start doing these things and spend a little money get you some blue cowboy boots and put them on the marketplace and see what happens your goal is not to make money your goal is to gather information how fast do these boots sell? Uh, what are the issues with these boots? What are the packing issues of these boots? Which kind of gets back to um, a little bit ahead of myself. You create a one-page auction plan. That should be action, but an auction plan. You create this plan and you run a mock business. You don't go to China or whatever. You, you find where the product wherever you can or something very close to it and you try to sell it. And you see what issues that you're going to have before you make a major investment. So you start off small with the blue cowboy boots and you're like, OK, well, it's a sizing issue. It's like for this particular brand, the size does not run true. That is going to be a very big issue with selling because if the size doesn't run true. You're going to have a lot of returns, which will decimate your margins. So you can figure a lot of this stuff out with a mock business plan. Now, this is something that's going to also sound counter to what I said. Limit the hours you work on the project. You are in a development stage. This isn't to make money. This is to gather information to give you better data to create a better plan to make money. This is a step that many people jump over. You'll see me doing this on YouTube all the time. I'll put up this product, see what happens. And people go, boo, we don't like it. And I was like, okay, why don't people like it? I ask a few people and it's like, well, I'm not really interested. It doesn't really appeal to me. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's radically apart from other stuff that you've done. It doesn't work for me. And that's really cool because it's better to find that out before you spend a lot of money. become a, And this is another thing that happens with business owners. The business is a broken down horse that needs to be shot, but they're emotionally invested. And it's like, it's got to work. It's got to work. It's got, no, it doesn't have to work. So by doing this and limit the hours you work on the project, you will actually be more productive because once again, this is a, an experimental phase because many people want to develop the business, get into the market and immediately start making money. And that's where things start to go sideways. So just, you know, also part of your one page auction action plan, you're going to say, I'm going to do this for four weeks or eight weeks or 12 weeks. I'm going to run this mock business get the numbers, then come back and then say, OK, is this really a good way for us to go? Now, the cool thing about this is since you are serious and you've created Pedro's Developmental Corp, which actually sounds pretty cool, Pedro's Developmental Corp, that all of this stuff you've done, the phone calls, the running around, the gas you spent buying products, sell, all of that creates a deduction for you that's legitimate because you're really trying to do something. So that business ideal doesn't work out. OK, you have already have Pedro's Development Corp find something else and one of the most important things is to create the plan the action plan to run the business and enact your mock business plans ASAP start doing whatever and also only do one thing at a time you know as you go forward and you start doing deals you'll be able to do two you'll be able to do three but the first few just do one at a time because there are too many people planning 90% of the time and only devoting 10% to action. So by starting this 
And this is one of the things you can sit down with your business plan and you can read all of these blogs. You can listen to all of these people and the information that you will get by interacting with the customer is going to be head and shoulders above all of this stuff online. And I'm going to give you a few examples in my business. I don't really have much of a website. Uh, I haven't even begun to put together hustleuniversity.org website. People are like, oh, you know, you got to have the website. No, you don't. You have to have a spot where you can conduct transactions and people can get their product. Website's great, wonderful, but there is Gumroad, there's Square. There's several ways that you can achieve this. And also, I'm always in the developmental place, and that's one of the reasons that I don't devote a lot of money to making hard stuff or making these beautiful websites because until I get enough intel that says, hey, this is stable, this is solid, this is profitable, I'm not investing the money because I don't have to. You don't really have to. Another thing about investing online, and one of the reasons that this channel has gone through so many iterations is things change so fast. So, and this is one of the reasons that I want you to en en enact your mock business plan fast is say you started doing research in January. You, you got your numbers, you're doing your due diligence. Everything is all nice and sexy. So you're January you're researching, February you're researching, March and April. Then you enact your business plan in the spring. And then things don't, and you're like, well, what happened? When you can, you know, the season that you conduct your business planning and actions is also important, depending on what you're selling, because historically, and you can look this up, people spend less money during the summer months on certain things, vacation, hotels, these kinds of things, back to school in August. That, but typically when the kids are out of school, their parents do not have the disposable income that they have when they're in school. So markets literally shift between May and August, and then they start perking up. Like right now, it's uh, end of August, and next month, second week of September, all the kids across the school, all all the kids across the country will be back in school. You will, st if you're selling on eBay, you're selling on Amazon, your sales are going to start to go up. This has happened year after year after year. So with that knowledge, you should know that if you're doing your research and that you know. In the winter months, the sooner you start, the sooner you start getting that real information and data. Because if you just research, 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 then launch in a different market, and you're like, but my, my data said this should work, and it's not working, it's because you didn't have enough uh, seasoning in business to know that. Because I, I say this on YouTube all the time, it happens every year, and it's going to continue to happen as long as we have this school system set up the way we have. It's, it's going to continue to happen because just think of yourself if you have kids. Do you spend more money when they're in school or less money? Just ask yourself that question and then ask this question of your neighbors, your friends, your family, and people in the next town, the next city, the next state. So there's a lot of this stuff goes on. This is why it's so important to do what I call tertiary planning. Get some stuff together. Get some numbers together. Don't invest a lot of money and just go for it. You're going to find out so much so quickly without a lot of investment, without a lot of wasted time, without wasted money. Uh, when I was in the contract office furniture business, I saw this all over the place. People had these wonderful business plans, spent 10, sometimes a few million on things that they really didn't need before they made their first dollar. The society was kind of set up like that, that, hey, if you're going to have a business, you need an office. And if you want to do business with certain people, you need an office at a certain zip code. And it worked for a long time. We live in a world that's radically different. You don't have to do that stuff. Anyone that tells you, uh, actually, a good friend of mine had this wonderful wedding this weekend. It was just beautiful. And then there was a brunch today. and There was all kind of activities. And I just looked at what happens when you plan stuff out because I was able to get a lot of stuff done this week and and still attend those events and do that stuff and also do the brunch and get stuff done because I had the to-do list and I don't know where I was going at that point but it somehow link up but like I said it was a great wedding it was a great wedding I you know you ever go to a wedding and you come out and you're like wow that was just beautiful you feel inspired for real but seriously you have to get really really started with this stuff quickly because if you don't 
if you take too much time after you get your research, conditions will change. Conditions will change and it could cost you. But, you know, once you do this and then if you've got three or four, because the thing is, I totally understand where you're coming from because I'm always launching business ideas. I'm always putting stuff out in the market because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that if you have 30 pieces of wood to put into the fire, you have a greater chance of having a long and long lasting fire throughout the night. But if you only got one stick of wood or two sticks of wood and if they don't, you know, if they don't catch or they're, they're not dry enough and they're still green on the inside, it could be for a very chilly, chilly night. But, Really just get going and getting that information because you'll have people telling you, ah, I know where I was going. See, I knew it was going to come back. I was at the brunch today and I was telling someone on the publishing company and asked me for a business card. And I was like, I don't have business cards. Hit me on Facebook. I still have not made up any business cards for this business because business cards do not sell business. They don't sell products. They don't sell none of that stuff. If people are really, really want you and they get your card and they call you soon after, okay, that, that business card gave them a way to access you. But typically, you could go on the street corner and pass out 1,000 business cards with your business saying exactly what you do, and you'd be shocked at how little business you get in comparison to the amount of effort that you put out because business cards don't sell. So my whole point is keep it lean, keep it simple. Now, you may want to, and this is a really... <clears throat> excuse me, snazzy idea with the business card thing. And this is what I used to do in sales. If you have to have business cards, because many people feel that they have business cards, this is a business card connection method that will get you many more dividends than just passing out business cards. Whenever, you know, like, let's take Pedro's Development Corp. He's got his business cards. And this is how Pedro would get more juice from his business cards. You pass out your business card and you demand you get the information of the people. If they don't have a business card. You take out your phone. What is your phone number? You put it in your phone and you call them immediately to make sure it's correct. Then in your calendar, while you're still there, put contact so-and-so, met at so-and-so, blah, 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 a week later. The, the follow-up will set you above, head and shoulders above so many people, it'll blow your mind. Because many people make connections and quote network and they never really follow up. So do that and then just open up a conversation. It's like, you know, anyone that has any business ideas looking for a partner? Because see, this is another thing with Pedro's Developmental Corp. Once you get that, that stuff together, you can go out and look for people who have established businesses and you can go in and be like, look, I, I know how to put businesses together. I know how to sell stuff. You can bring that business under your Developmental Corp on maybe a strictly equity deal and make money so you know i really think this was a good question and you know you made me think about some stuff hopefully you got a lot of benefit out of this and once again if you like the information and you think that pedro's question was awesome just go ahead and hit the little white eye and if he gets 50 bucks in donations or more he gets his 50 bucks back and hey you can ask a question just go back to now i'm gonna do this Bam. If you have a question, just send your questions, questions at hustleruniversity.org. And I'll take your question. I will send you an invoice for the fee. And typically I was able to knock because I got both of these this weekend and I was able to knock them out within 24 hours. My goal is to do them within 72 hours. But if I get them done really, you know, if I get the question in the middle of the day, I'm just going to devote time to it because I like this format. I think it's fun. I think it would be really beneficial for you and the people asking questions. And I just want to say thanks to the people who are participating in Hustler Consulting. All right. This is Glendon and I will see you on the good side.